So loud. Over there. Actually, Yeah. Okay. You cannot minimize. Oh, I'm good at this one. Um, Two different slides. It says hidden. Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead and pull it up. Does it matter? And then scroll. go past it. Yeah, scroll yeah. down. Okay, I'm gonna run to the restroom real quick. Oops. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Question. Yes. Is there an extra mouse pad just sitting in somewhere? Keith Ray keeps taking my mouse pad. Uh, <laughs> let me let me look. With my son looking for some wire thing that he needed for a gaming chair that he bought off the Facebook for twenty bucks. And anyway, there was a stack of just boring black basic mouse, pads. <laughs> like four bucks. I almost bought it. Just to bring it and like make a big deal out of giving it to him because he keeps taking my <laughs> but... give me just a second. Let me look. Yeah, it's in a brush. I'm just it's not and you know, and next next Thursday it's gonna be half 16. I mean low six, I mean it's gonna be yeah. 60 next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. So we took our um so my daughter transferred from Melbourne to a different school and we took her to West Virginia and we took her. And there's a, there was another girl last Friday. Good morning, everybody. We will get started here shortly. Cheyenne just ran to the restroom. So where she came? Okay, good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm like two minutes late. I try to be really punctual. Um, it's really hard to get my life together when my kids are not at school because taking them to school makes me <laughs> on time. I'm sure you all can relate. And I apparently they're never going back to school. So, um, you know, it's fine. Did they go back to bed? Yeah. No, nope, no school today. They did say, though, in the message that um, they were having some issues with heat in several schools. And yesterday there was a transformer out on the east side of town. So I don't know if that affected, I don't know. So anyway, um, today we are gonna talk about lead generation or generating your leads. Okay. Um, does anybody want to share anything from yesterday that they have been thinking about? And now they're like, woo, this is what I have. This is all the amazing things that I came up with between yesterday and today. If you're on Zoom land, please just unmute and tell me. Um, I will try to check the chat, but then I'm, you know, turn around, all that stuff. So anybody have anything brilliant? No. Okay, that's okay. We shared all the brilliance we had yesterday. I was a little bit of a hot mess, but it's not. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, so let's move that little box down here. There we go. <laughs> okay. 
we are the real estate expert. So we talked about sparking your career, embracing your job, connecting with your market. Yesterday, we talked about defining your value. And today we are talking about generating your leads. Um, we're going to talk about you as the lead generator today. Um, what kind of lead generation model to use. Um, your sphere of influence, expanding your sphere of influence, and lead gen best practices. Okay. Um, so 99% of our job is finding people to work with, right? <laughs> Um, the people that you find work with are known as leads. They fuel your business um, in the present and in the future, right? You're not always going to get right now business. Sometimes it's two years from now business. But as somebody very, a lot smarter than me always says, you need to eat in two years also, right? <laughs> so um, leads are responsible for growth, a potential, and protect you against market shifts. Um, lead generation plus lead follow-up, which is our next big segment, are the fundamentals of real estate. So in this segment, we're going to explore who, what, where, when, why, and how of lead generation. Um, I already asked you about yesterday, and no one wanted to say anything, which is fine. <laughs> um, did anybody, has anybody set up an accountability partner since we started this? Okay, I would challenge you to find an accountability partner and meet with them every day. And tomorrow, I will ask you if you found them. I'll just ask you every day until you find them. How about that? <laughs> and you'll get sick of me asking, and you'll just do it. Um, okay, so we talked about all that. My feel, fear of failure was greater than my fear of lead genning. So lots of us were in bold, and we talked about this a lot. Um, this quote clarifies that lead generation is the job number one, even if there's fear around doing it. And I think everybody at some point has fear around doing it, right? Sometimes it's scary. You get in your head about it, and it seems scary. Um, it's the activity along with the lead follow-up, which is covered later, that keeps us all from failing and instead allows us to, to prosper. You never stop lead generating for the rest of your entire career, ever, ever, ever. Even when you move into different positions, like I'm still doing real estate, but as a PC coach, I'm still lead generating for PC participants, right? The team leader is still lead generating for people to come to our market center and be part of our brokerage. Um, you're always lead genning for something <laughs> for the rest of your life. So is your fear or failure greater than your fear of lead genning? Something to think about. Okay, so we have talked about the six core competencies of a business. Number one, lead generate, capture, and convert to appointments. Um... Leads fuel your business, helping you reach the goals you have set for yourself. The more leads you have, the more business you have. That's right. <laughs> um, and the more success you can have. So lead generation includes what? Let's talk about some activities you can do around lead generation. It's not all, it doesn't always look like sitting at the phone and making 100 phone calls with an auto dialer. That's not what it always looks like. <laughs> what else can it Zoom land is not awake. Beth, did you have your coffee today? <laughs> did you set your coffee? I have it right here. I did. Oh, God. What about your coffee? So lead generation can look really different. I mean, it can look different for every person and every person's style. Um, I think the misconception is lead generation is cold calling, and that's it. Um, for me, lead generation happens in a lot of different places. So we have a lot of outdoor areas here that we, you know, we do like dining and breweries and this kind of stuff. And one of my favorite places to do that is at those kinds of locations. I'll, I 
And once again, I have no shame in making myself maybe look silly. Just absolutely mm -hmm. none. Okay. So I'll just walk up to a table and go, Hey, I will buy everyone at this table a round of drinks. Um, if you'll give me five minutes of your time, let's talk about real estate. And they're all in because they want you to buy them a drink. Yeah. And if the worst case scenario, if even if they're just talking about me, like I'm a crazy person, when I leave the table, I have the conversation and they are going to continue to have the conversation. Right. Yeah. I want everyone in town where I live to be talking about real estate because a lot of times they should be making moves that they're not making. So when they start making those, it's not just good for me. It's good for our whole industry. It's good for our whole area. So even if I just spark a conversation, guess what? They might be like, that Beth girl was crazy. But guess what? They're talking about that Beth girl and that's okay. That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to have to use that. <laughs> um, so lead generation can be literally anywhere. Um, it's just talking to people about buying and selling real estate. That's it. Um, capturing accurate contact information is really important, like name, phone number, email, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then converting the lead to the appointment is where the, you have to have a little bit more finesse, right? You can talk to anybody about real estate. You can walk up to a table and say, I'll buy you a drink. Um, that's when you find the active buyers and sellers is when you actually convert them to an appointment. Um, so set an appointment to meet, agree to work together, and then your appointment turns to a closing. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, it is understandable that there are, oh wait, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so let's talk about fears versus myths. Um, there are a lot of, fear, there's a lot of fear around generating, lead generating, even though we know it's the most important piece to our business, right? So let's be honest with ourselves. Who has had, who is having any of these thoughts as we dig into lead generation? Any of these? I think lead generation is really difficult. I don't have time. I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say, or I'm afraid of making mistakes. Who's had all, all or some of those thoughts? Everyone. Everyone. Everyone raise your hand. <laughs> Everyone. So these exact fears that Gary Keller had, or uh, these are the exact fears that Gary Keller had when he started out in business. <laughs> um, if you're interested, if you look in your shift book on page 52, it talks all about it. Okay. Uh, I think lead generation is really difficult. Um, well, let's change your mindset a little bit because we know that this business is all about mindset. Um, this is what Gary Keller was thinking when he just decided to erase his limited thinking. So instead of thinking, I think lead generation is really difficult, he decided to think, I think lead generation Oh, wait. I was confusing effort with enjoyment. Lead generation is actually easy. It's just not fun. I, I mean, I don't to differ. Like, sitting and calling people is not my jam. It is, I, I do not find enjoyment in that. But when I go to the dog park and I start a conversation with somebody about a house, and then I have, I think I have three leads from the dog park that are not happening right this second, but they're in the country. Like, I like going to baseball games and talking to parents about their house. Like, that's lead generating, and I enjoy it. I love taking teachers' treats and saying, if you need anything, call me. That's lead generation, and I enjoy it. So you can find joy in it. It can be fun. It's all about your mindset. Good. Okay. Um, when I don't have time to lead generate... Instead, he said, I have an issue of making time to lead generate and protecting that time. And that is the biggest key to the whole thing, is putting it in your schedule and doing it every day. Michael Prager has a sign in his um, doorway or in his window of his office that says, busy, lead generation in progress from 9 to 11 a.m. And if you're in the office and you're trying to lead generate like in a block of time, I would highly recommend 
doing something around yourself, have a sign, something that says, don't bother me from 9 to 11 because I'm regenerating. Um, I don't know what to say. Um, instead, he thought I had to get on the path of mastering the dialogue skills needed in this business, which is what? What does that mean you should be doing every day? Role playing. Yes, thank you, Mohammed. Role playing, practicing your conversations. Absolutely. And then you will know what to say, and it won't feel as awkward because you've already practiced it and you've internalized the dialogue, and now it's yours. It's coming out as in your style and your way of saying things. It's not, it's not a script, it's a conversation. And then instead of thinking, I'm afraid of making mistakes, he said, I found that lead generation is nothing more than a set of tasks and skills that are well documented. Hmm. Sure. So I have one thing to say about this. Wait, he says, I think lead generation is really difficult. Um, I was confusing effort with enjoyment. Lead generation is actually easy. It's just not fun. I think that if lead generation is not fun, then you're probably not doing it right. Yeah. Um, so there is a way, even if you're cold calling to sort of gamify what you're doing and make it fun for yourself, or maybe a competition against yourself, whatever that might be. So in my office, we actually have a bell. Um, and every time someone, you know, got hung up on or cursed at or whatever that might be, we rang the bell and we would all cheer for them because we knew that every no was that much closer to the yes. So we just started celebrating the losses and the wins, right? I mean, because we knew every single time that happened, we were that much closer. And when you know your numbers, you also, it's the, the lead generation becomes easier. Because you like, for instance, I know for every 30 phone calls I make, I'm going to get an appointment. I know that because I know my numbers in my business. So when I get to number 28 and everyone's either doesn't want to talk or I've gotten voicemails or no one wants to, whatever it might be, and I'm starting to get frustrated, I go, I've only got a couple more and I'm so close. And it keeps me going. So if you're at a point where you're going, this is not fun and I don't want to do things that aren't fun. Well, first of all, hi guys, we're grown ups. We do things that aren't fun sometimes. Um, but also find a way to make it fun, right? Make it fun for yourself. Give yourself a reward, right? Maybe it's, I'm not going to go out to lunch today until I've talked to, I've actually gotten 15 people on the phone. So if you're sitting there and you're a little hungry and you're going to treat yourself to a burrito for lunch and you're thinking about that burrito, you keep making phone calls so you can get the burrito, you know, whatever it is, find a way to make it exciting. I love it. I love it. And I mean, I know we'll talk more about this, but knowing your numbers is super important so that you do know stuff like that. You do know, okay, it takes 30 contacts to get a, an appointment, it takes 150 contacts to, to a closing. So if you're doing 150 contacts a week and you consistently had 150 contacts to a close, you know you should have a closing week, right? Those numbers are motivation. <laughs> They're big motivation. And there's all sorts of things out there that you can make to gamify your lead gen. Like, okay, I did, here's my menu of options. I did five Facebook instant messages. I did... 25 door knocks. I did whatever. Like there's so many ways to do it. Do you need I even made bingo cards and the bingo cards are super fun because then I can like cross off the boxes as I've done the thing, whatever it is. So do you have a box for yourself too. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, I'm not a, like, once again, not afraid to make an idiot of myself, not afraid to do those things. So some of mine are like, all right. So in order to get my five across or whatever, Maybe one of them is a live Facebook video. One of them is um, I have to door knock 10 doors. I'll get up and leave my office and go and door knock 10 doors in the rain if that's the box I need to get the five across. I love it. But your big why has to be big enough to get up and go and do that in the rain. Yeah. 
right? Because even a game's not necessarily going to motivate you to do that if your why isn't there. So, you know what motivates me? I don't want to go back to teaching. Money. If I don't succeed, guess what's going to happen? I have to go back to teaching. That's a big motivation for me. So think about like what the what's the worst that could happen if you don't leave Jen? Don't pay your bills. I mean, anyway. Okay, we can go on. All right. Um. Okay, so lead generation is the number one key to being successful in real estate. It doesn't matter how great you are at selling houses. If no one knows you're in real estate uh, and they don't feel connected to you in some way, it doesn't matter how great you are. You're not, you don't have the leads, you're not selling houses. So if you, um, you already have two key components to lead generation. You know what those are? A sphere of influence and a database. Everybody knows what the sphere of influence is, right? It's the group of people that you know and they know you. These are the people who are um, most likely to know and trust you. Therefore, they're the people to most likely do business with you because people do business with people they know, like, and trust, right? So how do you access this group? <laughs> your whole life is right here in your phone absolutely okay let's look at the opportunity i want everybody to take two seconds and look how many people you have in your phone how many contacts because i want you to do these numbers So mine says it right at the top. Does everybody else's? I'm an Android. I know it's a problem. So if I go to contacts and I scroll down, <coughs> I have 856 contacts. In my soul. That's a lot. Okay, so let's do the bat. Everybody got your number? How many do you have? 355. 355. Beth, how many contacts do you have? 689. Okay. So you take the number of contacts in your phone, the potential closing opportunity from your contacts. Ooh, math is hard. Okay. Um, use the example above or change the commission amounts shown on the slide. Potential closing opportunity. So get your phone, scroll down, contact list. According to um, National Association of Realtors, the typical person moves every eight years. Oh, so. According to the 2020 census, the home ownership rate in the U.S. is 64.8%. So if we can assume that 64.8% of your database is a homeowner and they will move every eight years, this means that 8.1% of your database will buy, excuse me, sell, or buy and sell a home every eight years. So we'll use this number to figure out how many people you already know who are going to buy and sell. Take the number of contacts in your database and multiply it by 0 0.081. 0 0.081. Okay. Um, and then put that result on line B. So instead of 250, you have whatever your number is. My number is 69. And then um, it says to go ahead and round down so we can be conservative. So on the example of the slide, if you know uh, 250 people, that is likely 20 of them will buy or sell a house. Now, let's assume that all the people in your sphere of influence, of all the people, 10% of them refer you to a client this year. Does that seem doable? 
Yeah? Okay. Um, so on line C, multiply your contact list by one. Oh my gosh, I need. Um, I don't know where the markers are. That's right. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Plus 85. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm having a heck of a team here if these numbers are true. <laughs> uh, all right. So add line on D, you're going to add B and C. And then do you know your average commission? Let's say average commission is $7,000 for here, give or take. That's about right. <laughs> I'm an MREA according to this. <laughs> so that's your income opportunity just for who's in your sphere of influence without going out and buying people at a restaurant a round of drinks to get them to talk to you about real estate. This is just people you know. That is amazing. Anybody else want to share how much you, uh, what your income opportunity is? What's yours? 448,000. 448,000. Mine is a million. So we have a different average commission here. So yeah. when I factor in what my average commission is, um, I have 1,107,000. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. And when I look at that, it makes me want to throw up because that's not how much money I made last year. Yes, exactly. That's, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Like there's so much missed opportunity just because we're not keeping up with our people. You know, and 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 we, we talk the talk all the time, right? Yep. And it's it's truly the follow through of it. We know exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Yep. I don't think there's a single person sitting in this room that the that anything that we talk about is going to be news to them. They know what they need to do. <laughs> we all know what we need to do. It's just putting it into action and actually doing it. Yep. And it's numbers like this that make you choke a little and go, oh, oh boy. Uh, and I, know I had 856 contacts on my phone. I had no idea. Well, and if you look at it, just and if you really want to feel like you're going to throw up for a second, figure out what you did make last year, right? And subtract it from this so you can see the difference. And when you I see the difference, year. then ask yourself, what could you have done with that much extra money? Oh my God. And when you start looking, you're like, I could have paid off my house. Yep. I could have, I could be paid off all my cars. I, I could have on my last loan debt. I could have, whatever it might be, and yep. my kids could have a college fund, whatever. All of a sudden, that number becomes very real, very quick. Yep. Woo! There's your dope the reality for the day. Okay. So, yeah, that's. Uh, that is something that little it's uh, right here. It's something you should do once a week, just to, just to get those numbers back in your mind again. Yeah. You know, just do them again. You know that it's going to be the same. Maybe you might have had a couple yeah. contacts, which you should uh, Just think, go back to it every now and then. Yep. And say, look, this is what I should do. This is what I can do. Take this and look at your opportunities on command and hopefully, I mean, we'll get to that, but hopefully when you meet someone and they're a lead and you think it's going to go somewhere, hopefully you're putting it into command as an opportunity. That's how you see your pipeline. That's how you see what's coming. I need to eat in February, but I also need to eat in October. So what do I have that's coming the whole year, not just next week? So if you compare, I I know what's in my opportunities. If I compare that to this, I'm like, I am missing so many things, so many people. Because I only have 38 opportunities in my community right now. And I have a million dollars in opportunities sitting in my database. So, whew, yeah, there's your dose of reality for the day. Okay. So your sphere is your database. 
Your contact list is your database. Your social media is your database. If we are going to be in relationship with our contacts in a professional sense, we need to have them organized and accessible in a smart database. Even though your phone is smart, it is unlikely that your database is. Today, we will touch a bit on feeding your database, and then the next session, we'll cover how to make your database smart. If you have a sphere of influence, which we all do, we just discovered that, <laughs> uh, a database, oh, if you have a sphere of influence, a database, and you've been lead, generating leads from a database by communicating with it strategically. Um, so how have we already been lead generating in this class? I don't know. That's a weird question. Oh, what tool or system have we been using? That's right. <laughs> what have we been talking about since the very beginning? What kind of system? Success systems, that whole 10 contacts a day, handwritten notes, um, the social media, right? We've been talking about that? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. I hope your real estate business is going well. I'm keeping it in mind. Perfect. Just yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Now she, I mean, she knows, right? Oh, she, yeah, and she did. And she's, she's in the tax business. She's got her own tax business. So Perfect. You can, we'll talk about this more, but you can even like do a small business spotlight on your social media and reach out to people like that. Say, hey, would you like to be featured on my small business spotlight, my social media? And that's a way for you to like, hey, I'm going to lift you up too. Yeah. If you know people, please give my name out, but I'm going to do my best to get your name out too. I had a I was showing a client a house and he's a painter. He's like, well, if you bring me business, I'll give you a percentage. And I was like, well, we can't do that. <laughs> That's very sweet, but I'll just send you people and you send me people in return. It can be like a you know, symbiotic relationship in that way. I can take your money. It's kind of illegal. <laughs> sweet though. <laughs> okay, anybody have an aha about this? I mean, my big aha is, I have a million dollars in sales sitting in my database. Just chilling. And you didn't make a million dollars last year. I sure didn't. <laughs> and you didn't add those million dollars, million, you didn't add that million dollars worth of business new to your to your phone, right? So it's been there. Yep. Just sitting there. Somebody else is yeah. getting it. That's what's happening. Hurt. It does hurt. Somebody else is getting it. Because if you're if you're not talking to them. Somebody else is. Okay. That's a big aha. All right. Let's talk about a lead generation model. Because even if your thing is to go to the dog park and to go to jazz exercise, and I mean, you still have to have some system and model that you follow in order to make your lead generation consistent. Because without consistency, you're just you're you're not going to be successful, right? Okay. So now we've we have a lead generation, we have a database in the sphere. Now we need a model. You will hear this over and over again throughout your career. It is really the most important activity. Lead generation is the really most important activity. It's the first thing you need to know to start your real estate business, and it's the last thing you will give up doing yourself. If you decide to start a team and leverage your business to the point that you are no longer involved in the day-to-day -day running. So think about that. What we're learning today is the foundation for a million, multi-million, and even billion dollar business. That is also why your time each day to complete your daily success system along with your peers and facilitator is so important. All of us, no matter where you're at in the business, that is why you you having a lead generation model is so important and you following it and being consistent. 
because you could have a billion dollar business. Think about that. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna move y'all to the side here so I can maybe. Come on. There we go. Okay, as you've learned, Keller Williams has a model for everything. They make it easy for you. It's all right there. You don't have to make it up. It makes sense that there would be a model for your number one job, which is lead generation. Though it may look complicated, it's about one thing. Relationships. You are in a relationship business. The more relationships you have, the more business you have. The model tells us how to get in a relationship with people, stay in a relationship with them, and be their real estate expert of choice to buy and sell. So lead generation is simply getting people into your database so that you can tra track your relationship with them. As you can see at the top of the model, there are two different activities that can bring leads into your business. Prospecting and marketing. You can never have too many leads. A lot of leads or a quantity of leads gives you good quality leads. It is the best practice to, to generate leads through a prospecting-based, marketing-enhanced approach. Prospecting is proactive and direct. You are actively searching for leads. Prospecting should be... Oh, now I gotta move you again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, prospecting should be low cost to no cost should yield a quantity of leads, which in turn gives you quality leads, should establish personal relationships, and it should keep you in direct contact with the market of the moment, and it increases your confidence and skill. With marketing, you are putting your information out there to attract leads through sources like social media and print ads, radio, whatever. Anyway, no, um, I was going to say something about a radio commercial that annoyed me, but that's not nice. Um, we will talk a bit more about this one in our some of our other sections. So, do you guys understand the difference between prospecting versus marketing? Have I got that? Because they're different. So, marketing is it takes money, it's passive, and the results are more long term. But prospecting typically gives you immediate results. Okay, so top agents. Oh. The market, your preferences, your budget, and your goals will usually dictate the type of leads of lead generation you employ. Top agents track their most productive lead sources, which are usually your sphere of influence, repeat business, referrals, and offline advertising, like direct mail, and Euro signs, and stuff like that. When you get a lead, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when you get a lead, that's why your tags are so important, so that you can see what lead generation method is helping you the most. Right, so if you get a lead from Uh, a social media ad you put out, when you, when you put them into your database, you want to mark. Like, I mark specifically which ad it was, not just a social media ad. So, like, when I had that, I got 29 leads from the ad I ran in November between the open house and the ad, but I marked them differently. This was the Jason Port open house. This was the Jason Port ad. So, tagging, 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 so that you can see what is bringing you business and what is not doing you any good and it's just a waste of money. You want to see what the return is, right? So I mark how I met people, like if I met them at the dog. Or I have a lead that I met at my own garage sale two years ago. <laughs> and they came to my Grinch Pensive Bench. <laughs> anyway, like 
mark where they are coming from so you can see the return. No single approach or method will bring you all the leads you need to reach your goal. A blended approach works best. No matter what your approach is, you should always be offering some form of value in exchange for information. That information is what you will need to continue the relationship. So when somebody comes into an open house and they ask you a question about the house, you can say, well, if you give me your information, I'm happy to share that information. I need to find the answer, but let me send it to you, right? Or if you meet a, a friend of yours is like, oh, I'm thinking about selling you, like I can give you an equity analysis, give me your email so I can send you that information. So you're giving them something of value every time you're in contact with them because they're giving you their information. They don't want to be bothered if it's not something of value. You know what I mean? Um, although you won't rely on a single source for lead gen, you also aren't going to do all of that. Don't do all of that. Pick your top three to five that produce the most leads for you and that work for you, that feel natural to you. You should do something that is that works for you. Does anybody have um, one that really like me taking treats to teachers? Half of my business in my first two years came from my, my the school I used to work at. Half. So I know that that is producing results for me. So I continue to take them treats once every two months or so because that gives me results. Cheyenne, the first three years I was in business, every time I closed a buyer deal, I threw those buyers a housewarming party. There you go. I you told them they had a $200 budget for food. And all I asked, in, and I would even send out the invitations for them as long as they gave me the addresses. Um, all I asked in return is that I was invited to the party and I got to talk to their friends. Because birds of a birds of a feather flock together, right? So if they're at a point that they're buying houses now, their friends probably are too, yep. right? So I could shake hands and kiss babies and do all of the things. And then eventually it got to the point that so many people were buying houses that they were like, oh, if I buy a house with Beth, I get a party? <laughs> the party's got a little out of control. So we just decided that that's not what we're doing anymore. <laughs> as a business decision but instead now it's so fun when i do throw a customer appreciation party because those people that were there in the beginning are like remember when this was at like christina's house and we were all in the backyard and we had the tacos and it was great like we can eventually your customers become invested in your business as much as you are if yeah. you do it right and you follow up with them yep so they love it as much as you do. And when that happens, you can start to see that return on investment. That $200 that I would spend out of every single one of those commission checks was absolutely worth it to get my business launched. Yep. Gene Rivers will tell you to do that in his business cleaning clinic too. He tells you to do those. And he also tells you to That's have- That's where I got it was Gene yeah. Rivers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he also tells you to do a launch party. Um, I did a huge launch party. We we ordered a bounce <laughs> a giant slip and slide bounce out. <laughs> oh, it was really fun. Anyway, uh, but pick three to five things that work for you. Open houses, um, door knocking, uh, you know, like I do the teacher thing, whatever. Pick things that work for you that actually bring you business. Be enjoy. You want it to bring you joy. So you're a teacher thing. Are you taking them to the, the, yep. the house school? I mean, yep. Sure. yep. So I started it while I worked there. So once a month or once every six weeks or so, I would just make treats. And it was, since I worked there, I would go around in the morning before the school started. And I'd be like, here's my shameless marketing. <laughs> and I would make a joke of it. Yeah. And just bring them a treat. Every, like, Teaching is hard, y'all. <laughs> and they need all the love they can get. So then I've now I've trained them to look forward to it. And I've trained them that they're homemade treats, which was not smart on my part because it's very time consuming. But 
but I love to do it. I love to make treats. So it works out. Um, so then when I left the school, I started doing it for the two schools that my kids go to also. And I have, I have not gotten a return on that yet, but I've only just been doing it. It's not been that long. So, and if nothing else, it brings them a little bit of joy in right. their day and it doesn't cost me that much. You know what I mean? The, the, right there. So it's doing something good for the community. Even if it doesn't bring me business, it brings me joy to do something nice for them. So, but pick, when you're picking your things, open houses. I have closed, I don't know, several, several clothings from open houses. So I, and I love them because I'm better in person than I am on the phone. People are coming to me. I don't have to call them and beg them for business. They're coming to me. Um, so open houses is totally one of my things. One of my things. Um, I also do jazz. I do jazzercise. <laughs> I have it in like a month and I'm like jonesing because I was so sick in December. And I'm, anyway, trying to get over it now. I'm all thing. But I wear my shirts there and I sponsor some things that they do. And so eventually that's a real tight group. And once you get in it, you're in it. So eventually that is going to, I'm going to penetrate the group and get in there and they're going to use me for all their things. It just takes some time. Um, but pick things that are, that work for you and that you enjoy. Beth, what are one of your, um, like, top four things that you do? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Um, so I've done a few things that have worked really, really well um, that are repeatable. Um, one of which is every Halloween, we have not just candy for the kids at our house. Um, we have a cooler for the grownups because yeah. here on Halloween, it is 9,000 degrees out and everyone is traipsing around with their children and they're boiling to death right in in costumes and whatnot so um i got beer koozies made <laughs> with my name and information on them yep. and they just say um you need a realtor who's got your back it's awesome and so when I, they ask if they can have a beer out of my cooler, I hand them one, I put a koozie on it. I'm like, I got your back. Here you go. That's ah. awesome. I yeah. love it. Because as parents, we all know it's Halloween is special. <laughs> and sometimes we just need that by that time of the day. So there you go. <laughs> love it. I love it. I put beer koozies in my open house bags that I talked about doing. I make the koozies because it's pretty easy. And I put a koozie in there and I put my business card that's a magnet and a pin. And that's, I get those out at open houses. So the people are like, oh yeah. They look at the koozie and they're like, oh, yeah, I remember it. <laughs> um, I also just started doing giveaways. My first one went live this morning. Um, did I show you guys that? So I, I make all the things. So I made bourbon barrel signs. So I made a bourbon barrel stay that says Kentucky Wildcats, and that's my first giveaway. Um, and my goal is to do one giveaway a month, and it doesn't have to be anything big. That sign cost me four dollars to make. You know, like I, I can tell you, we do a giveaway too, and we do one that is a Christmas, a live Christmas tree at Christmas time. So okay. it's on on Black Friday. We do the giveaway. You have to call in. It's a reverse bold one hundred. They have to call hey. in. Um, if they want to be entered to win the Christmas tree, I mean, you have to understand our market's very different to get a live Christmas tree in Florida is a special experience. There are very few places that you can obtain this. Interesting. Okay. So we, I pay for an experience for them to go to a Christmas tree farm. There's only like one in our entire County. Um, we can, I pay for them an experience to go to the Christmas tree farm. But on all the flyers, and every time I call, I've partnered with the Christmas tree farm, Santa's Christmas tree farm in Eustace, Florida. And they are fantastic. They put together an experience for my customers where they'll take them out and allow them to cut down their own Christmas tree and they can have a 
good old fashioned Christmas experience and a picture with their Christmas tree and the whole nine yards. All I have to do is pay for the Christmas tree, which cost me about a hundred bucks, but all those people call me uh -huh, give you all their information. And it, and it literally just takes me a few hours on one day. That's amazing. Yeah. It's funny how much you take for granted when you live in different parts of the yeah. country, because that, I mean, you get, when I lived in Indiana, you get frostbite going to catch your own Christmas tree, but we still did it. <laughs> well, I grew up in Northern Michigan. So it was part of my <laughs> life growing up because yes, you always had a real Christmas tree. You always went and cut one down. Yep. I moved to Florida and had a culture shock to the point that I went and bought a white Christmas tree, a fake one. Cause I'm like, if it's going to be fake, it's going to look fake. Um, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But when I realized that there were places that did this, there's just so few and far between because those types of trees just don't grow here because of the soil is just sand. Um, now, there, it has its own set of issues that I've learned about having a real Christmas tree in the house because we get ants on our Christmas trees and lizards that live in them and all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, I don't want one in my house now. I've learned that real quickly. Um, but people, my customers love that experience and they look forward to it every year that I give away a Christmas tree experience. That's awesome. So, yeah. I love it. Um, <laughs> fun fact, it did not go live at nine o'clock like it was supposed to. I scheduled it and it didn't go. Cool. Okay. That's all right. I'll post it until then. Um, anyway, so pick things that work for you, right? That's, that's the whole idea. Um, I also love events. So I turn all of our parties, we, we host a lot of parties because we finished our basement last year and it's really cool. <laughs> like we have three TVs over here and we have a bar over here. Anyway, so I host a lot of parties and I always turn it into something real estate so that I can A, write it off and B, to remind my friends that I need you your help to be successful. <laughs> Just remind, hey, do you know anybody? Cool, we talked about real estate. <laughs> okay. So what do you on 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 that with your friends? Yeah. I, I, I thought that we we've got a core with the friends that we're all different. Yeah. How do I continue doing that without sounding? You know. You could do like when I did um, I remember when I did a party, I was like, okay, for bit for my business side, I'm gonna give away this this table of stuff is what I'm giving away. So if you want to sign in to win, then that that is the business part. Yeah. So I'm having a fun, we're partying right. and friends over here. If you want to sign in, now you're fine. <laughs> so that's I mean that's how I did it last yeah. year. Okay. But then I oh, I just it kind of comes up in conversation. Yeah. I just bring it up and I don't push it. If they shy away from talking about it, then your relationship is much more than your business much more important to me than your business. Right. <laughs> um, but, or say, like have them bring friends and then you can bring it up to new people. Yeah. Beth, do you have anything to add on that one? My friends all just know that I'm going to ask them to do work stuff <laughs> at this point. Um, I am shameless about it. I don't hide it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it, it's actually become a joke amongst our friends. They're like, so Beth, what am I going to get if I come to this party now? Like, what is, what, what am I signing up to win? And I'm like, ooh, we're, we'll have to see. Maybe it's something yeah. fancy. Um, but, you know, I, I have the usual suspects at this point at most of my parties. I had a huge New Year's Eve party at my house. All right. My friends walked in and they were like, where's the sign up sheet? Like they were confused that I wasn't like giving something away. <laughs> they, I think they felt cheated because they were, they're so used to it at this point. Um, and I think it says something, first of all, about your tribe, right? About your, your friend group. So, you know, I think it, we always say the hardest people to pick up the phone and call when you're lead generating are your sphere of influence. And it's so funny because those are the people who know, love, and trust you. And those are the people that want to see you the most successful. Random Joe Schmo on the street doesn't care if you make a million dollars. Your best friend should. Yeah. So why am I nervous calling my best friend? Yeah. If I'm going to make an idiot of myself in front of anyone, it should be her. Yeah. 
right? But And yet we stop when it comes to making that phone call because we go, well, what if they judge me? First of all, if they judge you for trying to seek out happiness and success, I'm going to challenge you to rethink some things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, so I took a class uh, a few years ago with Kristen Cole. If you know who Kristen Cole is, she's a she's an incredible entrepreneur and she has the Kristen Cole Network um, and she has several different expansion teams across the country. She actually was in charge of, of expansion for KWRI for many years. Um, but in the class, Kristen said to, to our team, um, you have to ask yourself, if the people in your life are builders and protectors, and, and especially when we're starting our careers, we have to surround ourselves with builders and protectors. Are they builders of our business? And are they builders of our self-confidence? Are they protectors of our business? And are they protectors of us personally? So if they're in a group where they hear someone talking negatively, are they gonna stand up for you? And if the answer is no, Maybe this isn't the season of life for you with them. Yep. It doesn't mean you have to unfriend them. It means that now is not the time to surround yourself with those people. Yep. Um, and I will be really, really transparent with you. I had to do that with my own brother. Okay. There was a, a year and a half, almost two years that my brother and I did not have a fantastic relationship when I first started real estate. He thought I was making a giant mistake. Okay, because I had left a very upward momentum career at Disney. Um, there were lots of opportunities in front of me. I just didn't want any of them. And I knew they weren't gonna bring me happiness. So I decided to take a different path. Um, my brother thought I was being an idiot um, and I didn't need that negativity in my life. So I knew when I was doing things, I couldn't invite my brother. I just couldn't do it because I knew he wasn't going to protect me. And I knew that if I turned my back at that party, he was going to be having this side conversation that wasn't helpful. Yep. And I didn't need that. Yep. So if, if you were really concerned about how you do this with your friends and not come across as sleazy salesy, first of all, don't be sleazy salesy. So there's the first step. Just don't do that part. Um, secondly, Think about, are these people actually builders and protectors of you? Because if they are, they're going to be overly helpful for you. They are going to be shouting from rooftops about how great your business is. And if they're not, find other people. Wow. Yep. It's true. I love it. Yep. Hey, I mean, that's, I got nothing else to add on that one. It's totally true. I will say it is hard as an adult to cut people out of your life, but sometimes you're just, you, you can breathe after that. I've had to do it a couple times because their values don't match. And I'm real big on that. Like, I, I don't, anyway. We could go on and on. Okay. Um, relationship management. As you gather people's information through prospecting or marketing, and you have generated the lead, then the next step is to put that information into your database. A database is simply a container that holds all the information for all the leads you've generated. If you are looking for the most cost-efficient tool, use command. <laughs> it's already there for you. Don't go buy a CRM when Keller Williams gives it to you. Um, command is more than a database. It is a platform with which you will have access to interconnected tools to support you from lead to close, all while maintaining the relationship. Uh, a smart database provides you with the ability to have a plan. He's the loudest human being on the face of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> but we love him. <laughs> Um, a smart database provides you with the ability to have planned meaningful communication with those in it, uh, which keeps you in a relationship. So we can think of your smart database as a data as a data bank because it can make you money dodge. I do want to say something about this. So when I first started, I felt like, why would I put my friends in my database? 
Like they're my friends. That seems silly. I don't need a um, smart plan to tell me to call them. But actually I do because I forget because you get busy. And especially if you have a lot going on in your life and you have kids and work and this and that, and you're trying to do a thousand things. It's easy to forget. Like, oh my gosh, I did not talk to her in three or four months. I'm a terrible friend. Actually, I have my very best friend from childhood. We are still very good friends, but we have very different lives. She is, she never had children, she's married, but she, if you don't have children versus I have three and three schools, it is, we're, we're worlds apart. And she gets insulted that I forget to call her sometimes. And I feel bad. I, I don't do it on purpose, right? Like, life just happens. And all of a sudden, it's January. And I have talked to her since October, which is probably true. But I'm the same way. I'm the only one in my friend group with even one child. Everybody is, I mean, everybody's married, but they just don't have kids. And it's just. They're like, don't tell us you're too busy because we're married too. And I'm like. You'll be amazed how much one seven-year-old takes up your life. One. It's just different. And it's not, I'm not, it's not bad, good, nothing. It's just different. And I don't mean to not call you. So my point is, when I first started, I was like, why would I do that? Because it helps you stay in contact with the people that you actually love and care about. It's not just for business. It helps you remember, oh my gosh, I have not called her since October. So... Don't be afraid to put your friends in there and put them on a smart plan so that you remember to keep in touch with them. Okay. Um, okay, so we use the terminology of leads and contacts to our to categorize people in our data. So far in your success system, time, You've been communicating with your sphere of influence or people you know who know you. So these people are contacts with whom you've had implicit permission to have two-way conversations, right? Leads are people who have shown an interest in the services you offer and have provided a way for you to contact them. However, they have not yet engaged in a two-way conversation with you. So what's some examples of contacts who you haven't had that two-way conversation with yet? Anybody think of any examples? Like, uh, if you put out a social media ad and they're clicking on your social media ad, those are people you have contact information for, but you have not, they're not leads yet. You don't know much about them yet, right? But they are leads, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. But there, you have not engaged in a two-way conversation with them. Maybe people you meet in an open house. Uh, maybe people in your neighborhood. So our database is organized in these two buckets, leads and contacts, because the way you communicate with each, with each is unique. No, you're fine. So once you have a lead, you need to create a relationship with that person. For contacts, you want to sustain and strengthen your relationship. This is just an introduction into what sustaining relationships looks like since we have a whole section later on lead follow-up. Okay, sustaining your relationships is what we see in the model is cultivating contacts from conversion. When we say conversion, we mean to move them from a lead to a contact to an appointment. Converting a lead or a contact to an appointment means that your client has the intent to buy or sell real estate. Okay. So lots of different types of communication. Each time you reach out to a person in your database, that communication is called a touch, right? Uh, a purposefully planned series of touches is called a campaign. A coordinated campaign of touches over time puts you front and center in people's minds when they think of real estate. These touches are how we nurture and strengthen our relationships. 
Having someone in your database doesn't make them your client. Reaching out to them consistently and systematically with value and deepening your relationship will lead them to choose you to be their client. One way to consistently and systematically reach out to your database, database is through automated touches. <clears throat> with command, we have access to smart plans and opportunities. So the two, those tools provide you with the option to automate your emails, texts, and even set up notifications to remind you to call your leads and contacts. I personally love the um, recurring tasks that you can set the time frame for whatever you want. I think that is like one of the best things that they did for command was set up those um, that you can set tasks on recurring. So like I have people from open houses from when I first started and I still text them once a month. <laughs> and I used to, like, I didn't always use command as well as I use it now. So I would have to go on my phone and look back the last time I texted them and be like, okay, it's time to text them again. Well, that's just stupid. So now I put it in command and I make it recur once a month on the 15th or whatever to text them. Hey, how's it going? Just seeing if you're whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Okay, the final piece of the model is the client and referral loop. Once the lead is converted to a contact, they can provide either new or repeat business, or they can provide referrals. Why do you think this part of the model is referred to as a loop? Why do you think it's referred to as a loop? Because I mean, it's just, it's just you can't keep generating. I think it just keeps generating the business over and around. And around yes, and absolutely. Stuff. Hopefully, regardless of the business they bring you or how long it takes, they continue to stay in your database. And it's your job to continue to build the relationship and develop it over time until they're ready to transact again or until they give you another referral. And you just keep it going. Um, I don't have, you probably don't, haven't gotten any referrals yet, but they're like, the most amazing things people can give you. Like when someone calls you and says, hey, I just gave a friend of mine your number. They need to buy a house. I told them about what, like it makes you feel all warm and gushy inside. <laughs> like you're the most amazing thing that has ever happened. <laughs> it just like, I don't know how you feel about it, Beth, but it made like, I've gotten several and it makes me feel so warm and fuzzy. Like, I feel like I actually did my job with you, which of course I did my job, but if you think enough of me to send me to your friends, that just is the best thing ever. I actually just got one from a customer that I sold a house to several years ago. Her best friend just reached out to me because they're looking looking to purchase her and her husband. And so just so you guys are know, this is also why tagging is so important. Every time someone sends me a referral, I make sure I go and I tag that they are a referral partner for me and they have sent me referrals. Um, and if you send me at least a referral every 12 months, you get to be part of what I call my VIP experience. So I've kind of created a velvet rope experience, if you will, um, in that people that are VIPs, like I have um, bought tickets at an Orlando Magic game. I have um, created a special tailgate at a UCF game. Um, certain things like that and that are just VIP specific. And then I splash that all over social media and everyone goes, how do I get invited to those things? And I go, all you have to do is give me a referral. Ta -da! And now it, it creates that, that want to be a part of it. Right. So, however, if I wasn't keeping track in my CRM and I didn't know exactly who was sending me referrals, how many they have sent. I wouldn't know who to reward. So please, 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 if you think that you can not keep up your notes in your CRM, you are missing the boat, okay? You need to tag everyone. You need to keep all the notes in the world. You need to know. And when when my customers refer her friends to me, I, I knew exactly who the friend was, right? I didn't have to go, oh gosh, I wonder who that is. I knew exactly who that was. 
I could then pick up the phone easily, call them and say, hey, thank you so much for this referral. It really means so much to me. And because you did this, you're part of my VIP program now. Just understand that you'll be getting additional emails and text messages about events that we have coming up that are specific to the VIPs within my business. And they were like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Thank you so much. Um, I just, I can't, can't tell you enough. Please track everything you do yeah. and make sure you connect who was referred and that who referred you business so you can reward those people. Yep. And you were reward the behavior, not the business. So that's correct. You're rewarding the behavior. Yes. So as soon as they send you someone, you do something for them, whether you close with them or not ever, they're mm -hmm. still sending you people. Like you reward that behavior. So they're like, oh, look, I'm, I'm going to keep sending her people. She really appreciates it. So you Absolutely. reward the behavior, not the business. So I love that. Okay. Um, well, hopefully we're all in a loop. <laughs> okay. Um as you nurture your leads and contact and continue to lead generate for new sources of business, you will either you will either be transacting from new repeat or referrals. The most important thing to remember is that lead generation never ends. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. It never ends. It should be time blocks for best results. It determines on the size of your business and essentially the how that will help you reach your goals. Um, and it's not in here, but it it should it should be yours. It should be what you need it to be, and it should work for you. Um. Okay, so in our last section, which we should be doing well on time because we have sales meeting today. I think there's a Zoom for that if you want to to be on that, Beth, the sales meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any ahas before we move on to the last section? Tag, tag, tag. Tag, 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 tag. That's right. Um, so I get leads, I get referrals from another agent in our office because she doesn't do both sides of her transactions. And she sent me one, yes, she sent me several. And I said, just to let you know, because it we went back and forth a few times and the guy was ready and then he wasn't and then he had an agent and then he didn't. Anyway, it was a lot. But I said, just to let you know, I tag everybody you send me. So even if they don't buy right away, I still will send you the referral. Because you sent me, she sent me probably five buyer leads in the last two years. I will always send you the referral fee because I wouldn't have that lead without that. Of course, I'm going to send the referral fee, but I tag it so that I don't forget. Even if it's two years later, I don't want to forget to give her that referral because she absolutely deserves it. So, anyway. Uh, what? Okay, we talked about sphere enough. <laughs> I think we're good on sphere. Um, there is, I will say, if you are struggling with growing your sphere, there are lots of ways to think about people you know that you don't realize you know, right? And these are kind of some categories for that. Like people, um, besides immediate family, friends, relatives, neighbors, past coworkers are a good one. Um, if you're involved in any group activity, hobby, sport, craft club, I'm in a craft club, like, <laughs> you know, all the things, um, teachers, church, um, being involved in your community, uh, like, you know, I'm in Rotary, the, those kind of community organizations, um, professional services, it looks weird. Yeah, we're talking about that. It's on page one. I, I'm not invested. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Um, financial services. Anyway, these are all really good ways to like help you kind of think about people you know that you might not realize that you know. So, um, you can, I mean, we're in, since we're in the relationship business, you can always, there's always ways to build relationships with these people 
to help build your sphere of influence and all of that. Okay. Okay, so this gold law says change the way you look at things and the things you look at change. So we everybody knows we have gold because I think Rebecca's on here. Yeah. She took gold, Ben took gold, I took gold, Muhammad hasn't taken gold yet. Um, gold is the opportunity to experience, like, you'll have the opportunity to experience gold at some point. Gold stands for business objective, a life by design. One of the great things about gold is that it helps you create a mindset, mindset of abundance and growth. It helps you shift your mindset using the gold laws. This is a gold law. So what we just did with the, those categories that we were just talking about, no, we didn't do that. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. This is the great gold law. <laughs> um, so and you can you can actually use this in every part of your life, not just real estate. So um, like I talked about the laundry, right? Mountains of laundry in my house for the giant. Did you know my 13-year-old is about a half an inch shorter than me? I'm 5'10. Well, I used to be 5'10. I'm probably 5'9 now. My 13 year old girl, who just turned 13 in November, is about shorter than me. We have giant clothes. <laughs> giant people, giant clothes. Their laundry is always piling up. But if I change the way I look at it, I can think, oh my gosh, I have clothes for my children. I'm so grateful to have a washer and dryer in my house and to be able to do the laundry at my house and not have to go to the laundry. So it's all about the way you look at things. So it's so funny that you say that because I feel like I'm constantly doing laundry as well. And I only have one child, uh -huh. but I, the way I change the way I look at it is that I don't have to do it all every day. There you go. The, uh, the done cycle of all the things in my life don't have to align. Well, right. Well, my house doesn't have to be clean. My laundry doesn't have to be done. I don't have to be making a million dollars, all of those things. I can do all of those things and they don't all have to align. Yeah, yeah. And then you change true. the way you look at that because so many times I was looking at, oh my gosh, I'm not getting anything accomplished. I feel like such a failure. I was in this bad headspace, And then I realized it's because I was expecting all of the, if you will, the done cycles to align. <laughs> that is an yeah. unrealistic expectation. Yes. They will never all align. And, and that's okay. Yeah. I can need an oil change and not be a failure. Okay. <laughs> I will get to the oil change. All yes. right. It yes. will happen. I will take care of my car. But today I needed to get laundry done. <laughs> today I needed to make my phone calls for my lead generation because if I don't do my lead generation, I can't pay for the oil change. Yes, exactly. Okay. So yeah, you change the way you look at it. First of all, we all got to give ourselves more grace, like yes. just across the board. 1, okay. That is just, I'm a firm believer in that. Yeah. God has told us all we're not perfect. And I don't know why we all think we need to be. Like, I'm not we someone to tell ourselves. things wrong. Um, <laughs> we do it to ourselves, especially as moms. We do it to ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So <laughs> as small business owners, we do that all the time too, yes. right? Everything has to be, we think everything has to be clicking and everything has to be aligning and everything has to be perfect in order to be a success. Um, and that's because we are comparing one, this is another bold law. We are comparing our insides to other people's outsides. Yeah. And social media just exacerbates that entire problem. That is correct. Because that's and what I can tell you. On social media. Well, and what I can tell you being in real estate, being in leadership in real estate for as long as I have been at this point, I can tell you those agents that look like they have it all together, newsflash, most of the time do not. <laughs> like not even close. A hot mess express. I have met agents who are only maybe closing 12 deals a year who are running a much more profitable business than someone who is closing 40 units a year. And it's because those people are spending so much money on paying for leads and not doing their lead generation and all of those things 
that this guy over here has the ability to actually build relationships and build a more profitable business. Yep. So if you, once again, change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, make that lead generation fun, make it a priority and make sure you create that bunker and protect that time to do that thing that you know is your one thing. We know that if by doing that, that is all we need to do to run a successful business and have a successful life. So guys, protect your time. Time block the heck out of it. And if you're not doing that, you're only letting yourselves down. Yep. So true. Actually, that's a good segue because we are going to... Okay. I feel like we've talked about serial points a lot. We're going to talk about, I'm going to skip through a little bit because I feel like we've talked about sphere of influence a lot. Let's just talk about legion best practices because this is a good conversation. Okay. Um, there we go. So as we have talked about already, Track your lead sources, tag them when you put them into command. Do it immediately. Don't wait. I tag them in the phone, actually. So if I get like a lead from the dog park, I'll put, I actually have a lady, her name is Megan from the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> um, but tag them immediately so that you do not forget. You have to track your lead sources so you know what to put your time into. You don't want to put your time into stuff that's not working. Um, audit your lead sources to determine what your top lead sources are. It's best practice to focus on three to five lead sources. You do not want to be all over the place and be doing 20 different things. Then you're not doing any of them well. <laughs> That's the issue. You want to pick three to five and you want to do them really well and really consistent. Um, diversify your database. An openness to a diverse client base opens opportunities. Diversifying your database brings more leads today and exponential future growth. Diversity is not one thing, for example. It's not race, right? Diversity is what makes each one of us unique. It's about our cultural backgrounds, experiences, personalities, and beliefs. It includes race, nationality, gender, physical and mental ability, spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs, class, sexual orientation, and more. A diverse data database and sphere prepares your business for changes in the market. The broader and more inclusive your client pool, the more ready you will be for changes from demographic shifts to new trends in the real estate industry. You also don't want to be that person that only works with certain types of clients, ever. You don't want people to see that you don't want to be that kind of person, I promise. You don't. Um, I had, like, my first year in real estate, I was really fortunate that I had all different types of loans. So I had a conventional loan. Um, I had one where they got the Kentucky housing um, funding for... Um, their down payment. I had a VA loan. Like that, for me, that's diversifying your portfolio also is having different kinds of experiences with different kinds of people. And the more experiences you have, the better you can help a wide variety of people. Um, so yeah, you just don't want to be known as the person that only works with certain types of people. And you don't ever want to get into fair housing issues. Ever. <laughs> Um, but diversifying your database is easy if you get out into the community and you meet people at different places. Um, yeah, if you get involved with different organizations, you can meet all kinds of kinds. And one thing I really love about Lexington, I might have already said this, one thing I love about Lexington is there are literally all kinds of kinds. There are people from all over the world here. And it is so cool that there's so much going on in Lexington all the time that no matter where you are from, what you like, you can find somewhere to belong in Lexington. 
And I think that's a really unique value proposition that we have from as Kentucky. That we, you belong in Lexington. Of course you do. Because everybody belongs here. So, anyway, that's something to look forward to, Beth. I mean, it is unique because we have the hospital, we have the university, we have Toyota. We have several Fortune 500 companies that are here in Lexington that a lot of people don't even know about. And it attracts all kinds of people from all over. And the horsing, the horse farms. I mean, yeah. So we are very. No, I agree. When I've told people that this is where we're moving, my, now my we're moving there as well because my husband is in the entertainment industry. He is a lighting designer for entertainment. Very cool. Um, and I go, yeah, he got a really great opportunity in Lexington, Kentucky. People, their faces are like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, not Chicago, not New York, not LA, not Orlando, not Vegas. Nope, Lexington, Kentucky. Because guess what? It is so centrally located yeah. that they can get to any one of those locations so quickly, so easily. And it's so close to so much themed entertainment, if you will, yeah. as far as amusement parks and that sort of thing, yeah. that it's, I mean, y'all take for granted probably how close you are to things like Six Flags, Cedar Point, um, all of that. And those all have stage shows. And that is exactly what he works on. Yep. So he left a job of, for, of 22 and a half years at Disney. He was the principal lighting designer for creative entertainment for this opportunity in Lexington. Wow. That's so cute. you guys are going to be an entertainment hub and that's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> We're also close to Nashville. I mean, Oh yeah, you can get I'm so excited. He's water. not as much, but I'm excited. Yeah. Oh. Um, we're going to Chicago this weekend for a wedding. I'm leaving tomorrow. Just I love that. Out there and zipping back. It's like six hours, depending on how many times I have to stop. <laughs> Me and three kids. That'll be. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. It's okay. The sixteen-year-old can help drive. Anyway, perfect. And we'll get to see Grandma. Oh, update on Grandma. She's out of the hospital. And she had pneumonia. Um, she's doing okay. And we are going to, uh, I don't care if she's on a gurney, she's going to this wedding this weekend. So <laughs> we are going to get her there come hell or high water. Okay. Um, time walking your lead generation. This um, is so, so, so important. It's time blocking your lead generation. Um, this is how you ensure that it is a priority. You make it part of your daily success system. Um, most agents, top agents, generate lead generate for three to four hours a day. Um, it's best to schedule your lead generation time. Like, schedule it <laughs> before anything else. This block of time is when I'm doing this. Um, Block it in your calendar as essential. It's important to remember um, your business as, <laughs> it's important to your business as brushing your teeth every morning is to your health. <laughs> I like that analogy. It's true. Um, hopefully you've been doing the daily success system and your whatever that is for you since we started Ignite and you'll continue after we're done with Ignite. Um, but this needs to be in your system. So this time consists of several activities. It's not just sit down and call. It is preparing your mindset to success, practicing your conversations, make sure you have a list of people you're going to call, which should already be done for you if you're using command and you have tasks set up. It should already be done. You shouldn't have to waste time on it. Just say um, Have the conversations. Maintain uh, the database by putting notes in for your conversations. Now, if that for you is immediately or afterward, I mean, you got to do what works for you. I, it doesn't work for me to do it afterward because I won't do it personally. I have to do it as I go. And sometimes for people that interrupts their flow, sometimes it gives them a nice little break. Whatever works for you. But do it in that time block, either during or after you're done. And then... Um, Follow up on any commitments or promises made to your calls. 
So if you're doing a three hour lead gen block, the first 30 minutes is kind of preparing your mindset, practicing, looking, you can look over your call list and make sure you know who you're talking to and what you're talking about. And then call people for 45 minutes. Don't stop, 45 minutes straight. And then stop for a minute, take a little break. <laughs> it's okay to get up and move around and do whatever you gotta do if, that, if that's what you need. Um, some people are better to just hunker down and don't move. Don't leave the office, don't walk around, don't move. I personally can't do that. I can't sit for more than 45 minutes. Obviously I'm dancing around up here, little tongue teaching. Um, but you have, to, you have to find whatever works for you. But that three hour block is really important. Lead generation is hands down. Without a doubt, no competition, your number one most important thing to do in order to be successful in this business. Therefore, you must mark off the time and do it well. So there are four key things you can do to protect your time for lead generation time block once you set it. Build a bunker, Beth said this a little bit ago. Find somewhere to work that takes you out of the path of disruption and interruption. You know what I mean? I need a curtain. I need a curtain. So I can just put up a little sign and be like, don't talk to me. <laughs> um, where can you work to avoid distractions? Like you need to think about what distracts you. If you're at home, I, it didn't work when I was at home because there's always laundry. There's always dishes. The dog's got to go out. The counters need to be wiped off. The floors need to be back, like whatever. Something always needs to be done. I was always distracted at home. So that did not work for me. Coming here works for me. Also, get up, dress up, and show up is a real thing. You will be so much more successful if you get up, dress up, and show up every day of your work. So, um, store provisions. Which means have your supply, materials, snacks, coffee, whatever. Have it all right there, whatever you need, so that you don't have to leave your bunker. Um, I always have snacks. <laughs> always. And actually, it worked out really well because I had a new buyer client last night come in. We met with him at five and his kids, and they were the sweetest little babies. And I had snacks to give the kids to entertain them. Because <laughs> so I always have snacks in my office. Um, so what, what, will you, what do you need to have in place? Do you need your calls? Like, do you fill out a sheet when you make calls and talk to people? And then you put it in your community. Whatever you need, make sure you have it. Um, sweep for minds. <laughs> this means anything that will distract you or take you off your focus. So put your phone on, do not disturb. Shut, turn your email off. Um, get out of, exit out of all your browsers. Don't let anything, turn off Facebook notifications. Don't let anything distract you because it is, in the world that we live in right now, it is like, oh, shiny thing, oh, shiny thing, oh, I got a ding, oh, I have to check. You don't have to check. Just turn all that off. If you have an iPhone, you can turn it into focus mode, right? That's what Phil does with his phone. When he's working here, our, our NCA, when he's working here, he turns his phone into focus mode so that he can focus on the most important thing. Um, yeah. And then enlist support. Tell those most likely to seek you out what you're doing and when you'll be done. Hey, I would love to talk to you about that and help you, but I can't until 11 because I'm doing this. Or I can't until noon or whatever the reason. Um, these tips all come from the One Thing book. If you have not read it, I highly recommend it. Okay, um, as we wrap up our learning session and transition to our success system, eh, let's do a quick recap. We talked a lot about what you're doing to lead generate, who you can add to your everyday routine. I'm teaching, see? Um, and how important time blocking for focused lead generation is. So, How's your mindset right now? Everybody feel good? What questions do you have? Concerns? No, I mean, 
I will get more out of coming here. Same. I can do it from home. I mean, I'm 25, 20 minutes down the road. Mm -hmm. But I feel more productive here. Yep. Get up, dress up, show up. <laughs> well, I mean, after 35 years working a nine to five job, I that was a hard thing to do. Yeah. I mean, what am I doing? Oh, I feel guilty. I don't know why I haven't done this. Oh, but I can play low laundry and I feel much better. Yeah. Or I'll back in the house. Yep. I, I've done something. Yep. Um, you know, this yep. morning, I mean, my wife, she worked from home three days a week. That makes me feel guilty. Yeah. Because she's working and she's working hard. But I'm not doing as hard as I should. You know, I, I, yeah. I feel guilty that she's. She starts at 5 30 more work and she'll work till 9 o'clock every night. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and so if I'm not doing something, I'm like, yeah, I need the laundry. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I went to the store. Yeah. But if I'm here, you're focused. I'm focused. And you know what? You get things done in a faster, at a faster pace when you're focused. Yes. And then you can go home and still do all that stuff. But yeah, it's, it, Once you're done with what you need to do here. Exactly. Because I mean, we used to be that. That couple that every Saturday morning we clean my house. We did it. After a while, I'm thinking, really? Yeah. Why? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, but like, you know, getting your bunker. Yep. I did, I, 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 I might have said that before when I was at that, at the, like, my last job at Credit Union. Yep. We were doing some expansion, so we were in, in uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Cubicles? Uh, cubicles, thank you very much. Got it. And I was over every one of the low officers, but I had a lot of stuff I had to do. Yeah. So I couldn't get my stuff done. I said, Bob, find me. I did. Someone said, put up a note. Yep. And my note said, do not follow me for May to 10th. Yep. Unless you're bleeding. Yep. Uh uh, you know. Yeah. And they came around and they saw that note up. They didn't do it. Took a while to just ignore the duck. But then by the yeah. like, they would come in and I'd pull that side. Yep. I, I can't. Yep. Because if I don't get what I'm doing, my ass is getting in trouble. Yeah. Which gets me coming back to you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know. Well, and a, a lot of it too is not just on the other person interrupt, like coming into our world, it's us allowing that to happen. Right? Yes. yes. So if your door doesn't have a lock on it to your office, put one there. Yeah. And be okay with someone knocking on that door and you not answering it. Yep. Like my son, when I was working from home, right during COVID, oh <laughs> business still has to happen. And I'm working from home and I'm homeschooling at the time, like a five-year-old and like trying to make it all work. He knew when he was supposed to be reading and that was the time I was supposed to be making my phone calls. But I mean, if anyone has put a book in front of a five-year-old and told them to read for three hours. You know how well that goes. Um, so what I will say is that we had to learn that if you knock on the door and mommy doesn't answer, or you try the doorknob and it's locked, I'm not coming out. Understand that. It's not happening. Okay. We had the joke in our house always was, and in fact, my husband got me a sign that goes around the doorknob that says this. Don't bother me unless you have coffee, cookies, or pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have one of those things, then I might talk to you. But if not, not worth it. <laughs> right? <laughs> True. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Any other aha? Build a bunker. Tag. People. Um, okay, so each day in Ignite, you grow how you think, feel, act, and implement what you've learned. From learning and ahas, you move toward achievement of your big life. Um, and that's why we're here, right? So we can all meet our big goals. Um, <laughs> oh, I was like that in history. Okay, yeah. I know. Yeah. Uh, especially in math, because the new math is knowing 45 ways to add 
one plus two. I'm not kidding about that. Yeah. But I mean, I'm a special ed teacher. My kids need to know one plus two. They need to know it really well. We're not doing 45 minutes. But yeah. so you're just going to confuse them. Okay. Uh, for the next two hours, yeah, no, we're not we're not doing anything for two more hours. Uh, make sure you uh, your challenge for tomorrow is to um, show like create your lead generation schedule and success system. Kind of combine those, and then I would love to see it. I'll show you what I have for me for mine. And then I want you to make one for you and bring it in. So bring me your success system and your lead generation outline. Um, that's just a recap of daily success systems, conversations, contact added, handwritten notes, social media engagement, enrichments. I started this week with two appointments. Like on Sunday, I already had two appointments for the week. I was like, this is a good week. <laughs> I only held one of them, but I signed the buyer and you know, it was good. So anyway, um, I would also challenge you to try to figure out how many appointments you need per week. And just that, that's part of your success system. If you get to five o'clock on Friday and you haven't had your appointments, what are you going to do to fix it? What are you going to do to meet your goal? Uh, make sure you're TCPA compliant. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution and people are happy to be in a relationship with them. That's just an affirmation. That should be part of your three hours of legion. You do your affirmation, you practice your scripts or your conversations, sorry. Um, this doesn't have to be your affirmation. It needs to be whatever works for you. Whatever you need to tell yourself to keep your mindset to keep making the calls and keep doing the things because mindset is huge. And it's easy when you first start out to get in your head, like when you get hung up on for the first time, it's easy to get in your head, but you're like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna call anybody else. They don't wanna talk to me. I'm bugging them. You know what, if you're bugging them, they won't answer, <laughs> right? I don't answer the phone if I'm busy. My husband just calls, I'm busy, I can't talk to you right now. They're bugging you, no, you're not bugging me. <laughs> but seriously, it's, don't get in your head about it. Make some, whatever your affirmation is, make it something that is going to help you continue to do what you need to do to build your business. Uh-huh. And I would encourage you to celebrate every little success. Um, I started, I suck at journaling, like terrible. I want to be good at it. I also wanted to be a runner at some point in my life. I'm not a runner. Um, so I would encourage you to um, keep some kind of little notebook, journal, whatever you want to call it, of your little successes. And it can be like when I started this this summer, one of my small successes was a guy I had been um, in contact with for like a year at that point finally responded and was like, we're going to be ready in October. He finally responded, like, that's a huge success. Yeah. And I think we get so caught up in, oh my gosh, I don't have any appointments. Oh my gosh, I don't have any, I don't have any under contract. We get so caught up in that stuff, we forget to celebrate the little things like that, that you're still moving forward. Right. You're just, I mean, you're getting there, but you have to celebrate those little successes along the way. Because those little successes lead to the big success. So I think that goes back to documentation and documenting what you do. Yes. Um and so, for instance, with my team, the way that I have coached them is that every time I have a conversation, they have a conversation with someone, they need to mark down what time of day they were able to get a hold of that person. That's a good right. Thing. Because we know that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And if all we ever do is lead generate from eight to noon every day and no one answers the phone. Guess what? That's not the right time. That's not the right time to be calling those specific set of people. So instead, now we can change our time blocking to maybe one day a week, I am lead generating from one to four and I'm doing my appointments in the morning, yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah. Because once again, we have to communicate with people the way they want to be communicated with. That is that platinum rule. And if that is the case, then we have to make sure that we are documenting what we're doing 
and we change the way we communicate. We cannot expect teachers to answer the phone between eight and three. We cannot. Yep. And if all you ever do is lead generate from eight and three, good luck getting a teacher on the phone. Yep. Never going to happen. Yep. So, Maybe you need to come in on a Saturday. Maybe you need to right. lead generate before you do open houses on a Sunday. I don't. Because then at that point, you're going to feel more successful because you're actually getting a hold of people. Yeah. And now you've got some real successes to celebrate too, yeah. right? So I, I really want you guys to keep that in mind when you're communicating with your customers, how do they want to be communicated with? Is it phone, text, or email? Yep. I ask that when do they want to be communicated with? Yep. Yeah. I and if they're never going to answer the phone. Wire last night because he works nights. And I was like, what time of day should I not call you? This is important. He sleeps during the day. If I call yep. him at 10 in the morning, it's middle of the night for him. Well, I work with a lot of people in the entertainment industry, right? Because my husband's there. If I call, they work overnights. That's when you load in shows. That's how yep. that works. If I yep. called them all during the day, they would never answer the phone. Yep. Um, so a lot of my lead generation doesn't start until about three o'clock in the afternoon. Because that's yeah. their morning. That's when they're getting up to get ready to go into work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I was told we have to go because we have a sales meeting. <laughs> Jeffrey just came into this to me. So, <laughs> um, okay. I will... It's, it should be the same Zoom link if you want to listen to our sales call. Because but he needs the computer. Beth, okay. Okay. Well, thank y'all. I'll see you tomorrow. Even if the office is closed, we'll still do this via Zoom. Um, yeah, because we're supposed to get more snow tonight. My kids are never going back to school. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Oh, oh great. How do I get out of here? <laughs> Make it go away. Oh, Maybe he wants me to just leave it on there. I don't know. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, I'm really excited. She, uh, yeah, I really like her. She seems amazing, and I think my husband just got in another accident with the car he just got out of the shop. Oh no. Right. You. <laughs> What is going on? Giant kicked down. Got mad at him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I left it open. I left this. I think I left the Zoom. I also, are you? I, sorry, I'm feeling. Okay. Okay. Uh, Unbelievable. Piece of the work fell off the project. Unbelievable. Ben? Yes. Um, I realized that when I set it, and I'll fix it for all the future ones, but when I set it up to record automatically, I had it set up to record to local devices instead of to the cloud. So, yes, today's recording is on this computer, and yesterday's recording is on whatever computer you zoomed from. Mine. Your laptop? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't, I need to figure out how to get that from you. What's up, buddy? Okay. Um, because um, it's someone I have to work with, and um, so every time that she would reach out to me about sponsorship uh, the lawyer, um, it was like individualized, and I was like the best thing to her instead of being 
individually on that new alternative that we're going to get people for the event for sale or meeting. Why don't you just be one to do annual membership and then give your sponsors, your members, an option to come to you and say, okay, we want to do that. And you know, I can't talk to the board. But you know more than I do. Well, from one year, the only thing that was like, the issues are us, us, the So we have that big billboard for the moving company. It was like, I don't know, have like a, a more exclusive package or what. And she really didn't um, highlight the option of spending the extra 300 per year. What I would have was that when she members, there was going to be a rotation. So that was, yeah, and Michael mentioned this that you had asked him this out the other day. So, um, I've had multiple managers at well. We've had sure. 11 different services yeah. under the welfare grid. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're almost sending me a text. Hey, just start by. What's going on? Are we not affiliated with them anymore? No, no, that's not that. I believe there's a rotation of membership. And then I was like, no, well, they're seeing it beyond their house. So that's why it's Michael and he's there. Yeah, they, they did last year. Uh, they paid three months. Uh, they wanted to lock down the building. So that, 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 